we also have to look at certain non uh, non pulmonary non pulmonary tests the most important would be ecg and echo most of the times on opd basis we may not a blood we may not need a blood gas analysis but for um, any chronic lung disease patient per se or chronic lung disease patients with an acute exacerbation who definitely need blood gas analysis uh, for uh, chronic allergic we might have to look for screen prick test which is uh, which is an allergic test which is important there are other miscellaneous uh, exam tests which we might have to see suppose a patient has nsip and he, uh, there are features suggestive of some connective tissue disorders we need investigation in uh, that manner like getting a uh, getting a ana profile done looking at his uh, uh, the patient's kidneys because uh, skin test all these would be become important de depending on the disease specific area or organ in based on the organ involvement area so next slide please so discussing about the clinical condition so this is very important so once we have fair idea about the patient's uh, clinical condition it very appropriate uh, very appropriate that we it has to be communicated in an appropriate manner to the patient and the family they have to understand what the particular condition they are facing and how it has to be taken see this this is the battle is not only the patient alone would not be battling this disease because he will need uh, the uh, if in a as as the disease progresses for a chronic respiratory failure patient those they would their family would also be equally suffering because they would have to take care of the patient on a regular basis they would have to uh, bring the patient both physical and emotionally it would be very very draining so if not for an appropriate communication here in this step there can be lot of uh, uh, the disease the disease tackling could be very very difficult later on uh, once the communication is done we have to discuss about the goals of treatment so initially we'll have to tell them that with the, there are uh, two important things we have to look, two uh, important aspects we have to do uh, look at the first would be to see what immediately can be done second thing is how this particular disease can be managed on a long term basis so certain ipf will be progressive they, 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 we just can prevent the rate of progression but the progression would continue to happen so even in copd at every point of the consultation it's very important to educate them about smoking cessation healthy lifestyle measures and all that so many a times the patients may not stick on to what we have said so these are all some road blocks in terms of an app uh, healthy life and reduction in the healthcare cost healthcare uh, reduction in the healthcare cost and overall improvement of the patient's health condition so when we come to short term measures symptom reduction everybody thoughts this this is what they initially want an acutely breathless patient who has significant bronchospasm so immediately we have to <clears throat> give him proper bronchodilators and relieve the spasm just in case what i am talking about bronchial asthma so addressing the acute issue and then eventually mm, with a uh, uh, you have to treat that particular patient later on also not just with short acting bronchodilators you have to now that we have diagnosed asthma it has to be if there are if the patient needs oral steroids those those have to be given and along with that inhaled corticosteroids plus long acting beta agonist have to be continued so along with this we have to properly take measures to avoid impending complications suppose the patient's asthma is not uh, treated it only the initial symptom of initial symptom which was acute bronchospasm was relieved by giving a long acting beta agonist the patient might have recurrence again uh, he might come back in a very bad state to uh, the hospital again so 
So this has to be prevent, prevented by giving appropriate maintenance measures to prevent the complication. So long-term measures like, <clears throat> so if a patient needs oxygen, supplemental oxygen therapy, we have to recommend it. Most of these patients would need a rehabilitation. That has to be appropriately counseled and uh, set upon. So many patients, now that if you see the uh, recommendations of uh, adult vaccination, it's very, very important to vaccinate all chronic lung disease patients with pneumococcal and flu vaccination. So those have to be advised to prevent uh, further exacerbations, recurrent infections, in these patients as even a mild infection and mild exacerbation can potentially cause major health hazard and uh, reduce their lung function immensely. Next slide, please. So as we have talked about this, um, treatment measures in uh, uh, pulmonary diseases are not very, very conventional. It's not just about tablets and injection. So oxygen therapy is very, very important. So again, in terms of oxygen therapy, short term, long term, all that we have. So here, when you look at the physiology of hypoxemia, so mainly these are the causes. One is hypoxic hypoxemia, uh, which we would be mainly concentrating about. The reasons for this kind of an hypoxemia are most importantly, uh, it's VQ mismatch, ventilation perfusion mismatch, which is the most common cause in that classical example of this is an Doctor, you are on mute. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Am I audible now? Next is yes, diffusion sir. defect, uh, which can happen predominantly in interstitial lung diseases. The other one is um, the other causes are naturally low FiO2 itself can sometimes be the reason for hypoxemia. So again, um, like in high altitude cases and all that. So in certain cases, pump uh, failure, as I said you, COPD and uh, neuromuscular diseases where the pump failure happens, so they can develop hypo hypoxemia. Uh, so most of the yeah, most of the patients what where an intense respiratory who has a reasonably um, reasonable amount of pulmonary disease would need either an acute oxygen therapy or long term oxygen therapy depending on the condition overall so this is not a conventional kind of treatment in any of the other uh, departments if you see inhaled therapy uh, most of the airway diseases are treated with inhaled, either in either inhalers or nebulization. So, appropriate knowledge on inhaled therapy is important. We have to also educate the patients accordingly. So, most often we find we find in uh, clinic many patients not wanting to have inhalers as their treatment. Uh, an acute asthma patient. If he doesn't take inhaler or nebulizer, how well, what is the other option? What, uh, what is the other better, uh, what are the other options which are better than uh, this inhaled therapy? None of them. We have to educate them in such a way that they also feel that yes, this is the rational uh, measure what doctor is giving us and this is a stand of care. This is how we have to uh, take the medications and improve our health. So most of the times we give them examples of local therapy. Suppose an eye, uh, a patient has an eye problem, uh, we would recommend him eye drops, isn't it? So like how these eye drops act locally in the eyes uh, with a minimal dose and they can as they can reach the eye uh, very quickly, the onset of the action will be also be good. And that that is how... Um, the efficacy of the drug improves with less side effects. The same thing applies to the inhalers. So these kind of examples will make the patient understand, yes, uh, this is, uh, yes, the doctor is probably suggesting me the right 
medication for my condition and uh, uh, this can take away the fear of uh, using inhalers irrational fear of using inhalers and becoming addicted to them all this can be taken off from the patient so non invasive ventilation some pa- in acutely when some patients need it's not so difficult to use this but when they have to use that on a long term basis it is where uh, patients feel problem and we also have lot many patients who are at home with an invasive mechanical ventilation through a tracheostomy so appropriate knowledge and fair amount of um, excellence in these and these measures are also is very important in treating doctors to ensure the correct treatment is being given to the patient and a prop it has it is monitored in a right manner on a timely basis next slide